Hey guys, in this video we're looking at section 7.2, which is on cylinders. Um, and so if we are drawing a net for a cylinder, um, remember a net is a two-dimensional figure that represents a three-dimensional shape. So think about if you were to take a soup can and you were to use a can opener to take off the top and a can opener to take off the bottom, you'd have two circles. So we have a circle on top and a circle on bottom. And then you have the can part, that's the, the lateral surface. Um, and if you were to take a, a pair of scissors and cut down the edge of that can, you would end up with a rectangle. And so you'd have like a label that says like soup on it. So that would be what the net of a cylinder would look like. Um, and so we have this circle here would run along each of these edges or that edge and this circle would run along this edge. And that makes this the height of our cylinder. And the nice thing about cylinders is that they actually have all the same formulas as prisms. So our lateral area for a cylinder is primitive base times the height. Surface area, we take that same lateral area and then we add the area of two bases to it. And then for volume, we're doing area of the base times the height. So when we're determining the perimeter of the base though, since our base is a circle, we're using our circumference formula, which is pi times diameter. And then area of the base, because our area or our base is a circle, our area is pi r squared. So for the first cylinder, I'm going to determine what the perimeter of the base height and area of the base are, and then I'll plug them in. So we know that the perimeter of our base is pi times diameter. Since our radius is 3, our diameter is 6, so the perimeter is 6 pi. The height is the distance between our two bases, so that's 6. And then the area of the base is pi r squared, so for this one it's 9 pi. So for lateral area, our formula is perimeter of the base times the height. So our lateral area will be equal to 6 pi times 6, so 36 pi meters squared. For total area, sometimes they'll call it total area, it's also called surface area, we'll take that lateral area pH and we'll add our two bases to it. So we're taking the 36 pi that we had before and we're adding two of our nine pi bases and so we end up with a total area of 54 pi meters squared. And then for volume we're doing area of the base which we found to be nine pi and we're multiplying it by the height which is six and so we end up with a volume of 54 pi and then because it's volume our unit is cubed. The next problem says that we have a cylinder that has a lateral area of 70 pi square meters and a height of 7 centimeters. Find the length of the radius. So we know that our formula for lateral area is perimeter of the base times the height. Um, so 70 pi is our lateral area. The perimeter of the base is pi times diameter, and we don't know the diameter, um, but we do know that the height is 7. So from here, we know that since we have pi on both sides, we could cancel them out. And then to move that 7 over, we would divide both sides of our equation by 7. So we get that 10 is equal to the diameter of our circle, which makes our radius equal to 5 centimeters. Problem 3 says that a cylinder has a volume of 512 cubic inches. The radius is the same length as the height, so find the radius and the lateral area. So if our radius is equal to the height, I'm going to write this first, um, and then we need to consider what our volume formula is. So our volume is equal to area of the base times the height. Our volume, they told us, is 512. The area of the base is pi times the radius squared, and then we're multiplying that by the height. But instead of leaving it as h, I'm going to go ahead and change it to r, because I know that the radius and the height are the same. So then from here, I can multiply these together. And I get that 512 is equal to pi r cubed. Oh, it was 512 pi. Lost that. So then since I have pi on both sides, I can go ahead and cancel them out. And then to get the r by itself, I need to take the cube root of both sides because I have r cubed. So I do the cube root and cube root. So those cancel. And I know that the cube root of 512 is 8. So my radius is equal to 8 inches. So if my radius is 8, that makes the height 8. And for lateral area, 
our formula is perimeter of the base times the height. So it's pi times diameter. If our radius is 8, our diameter is 16. And we said that our height is also 8. And so when we do 16 times 8, we get that our total lat or our lateral area, I need to stop saying total, our lateral area is 128 pi. And our unit is inches squared. For number four, it says that we have a metal worker has a solid piece of steel in the shape of a rectangular prism. He bores, which means drills, he drills a, a cylindrical hole entirely through the length of the prism shown below. The diameter of the cylindrical hole is eight centimeters. What is the approximate volume of the remaining steel? So please be careful as you read word problems. They told us that the diameter of the cylindrical hole is eight centimeters. I'm not even gonna write that on my picture. I'm just gonna label that the radius is four because typically we're using the radius, not the diameter. Um, the question is, what is the approximate volume of the remaining steel? So what I need to do is I need to figure out what the volume of the prism is. And I need to figure out what the volume of the cylinder is. And then I need to subtract them. So I'm writing this out as my thought process for how I'm going to work out this problem. So starting with the prism, since I'm looking for volume, I need to determine what the area of the base is and what the height is. Um, and so I'm going to say that the area of the base is 15 times 20, which is 300. And the height is the distance between my two bases, which for this prism is 50. So that makes the volume of my prism equal to 300 times 50. So my volume is 15,000 centimeters cubed. For the cylinder, I need to determine the area of the base. Since my radius is 4, the area of the base is 16 pi. The height of the cylinder is the same as the height of the prism because the hole goes all the way through to the back end of the prism, like that. Um, so the height is also 50. So then my volume is 16 pi times 50. So 800 pi is my volume. And then finally, I'm gonna take the volume of the prism, which was 15,000, and I'm gonna subtract the volume of the cylinder, which was 800 pi. And the directions told me that I need to round to the nearest cubic centimeter. So I'm gonna type all of that into my calculator, including the pi, so I have 15,000 minus 800 pi, and that gives me 12,486.7, so, 12,847 centimeters cubed as my final answer. And my last question says that the volume of a cylinder is approximately 1,000 centimeters cubed. If the approximate diameter is 14 centimeters, how tall is the cylinder? So if my diameter is 14, I immediately know that that makes the radius 7. And then I'm looking for the height. So I'm going to write out my volume formula area of the base times the height, and I'm going to plug in what I know. If the volume is approximately 1,000, and the area of the base is pi r squared, so 49 pi, and I need to figure out what the height is, how am I going to work that out? Well, to get h by itself, I don't have a pi over here in my um, volume, so I'm going to have to divide the 49 and the pi to the other side, and here you have to be careful how you type this into your calculator. So we know that we want to divide the 49 pi on both sides, but if you type in your calculator 1000 divided by 49 pi, you will not get the right answer because your calculator is going to divide 1,000 by 49, and then it's going to multiply by pi. So you either need to type this into your calculator as a fraction, so you need to do 1,000 over 49 pi, or you can type 1,000 divided by, and then put 49 pi in parentheses so that your calculator knows to divide by both parts there. Um, either way, when we do 1,000 divided by 49 pi, as long as we type it in correctly, we should get 6.5. It says, well, let's see. So our height comes out to be 6.49, which it says to round to the nearest centimeter. So our height is approximately 6 centimeters.
and we're done.